Welcome to Amplify. I'm your host, Candace Dorman. On this show, we shine a light on people making moves, grinding, hustling, and being excellent because it's 2020 and there are still a lot of firsts and onlys across almost every industry. So let's dig in. Our guest today has been my friend for nearly two decades. She is an event producer and has created a range of events from small family gatherings to weddings and university-sized events. Currently, she is the development event manager for a private school just outside of Boston. She earned her bachelor's degree in communications and a master's in leadership and project management. She lives in Massachusetts with her husband and their three young daughters. Donna Ree, welcome to Amplify. Donnery, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Good. I'm so glad that you are on. Uh, and if uh, people have been following us for a few episodes now, you'll you'll remember Donnery from Chris Grant's story a couple episodes ago about how it was a Father's Day episode um, about how you guys met both doing student recruitment for your colleges. Mm-hmm. And that was an amazing story. So if if people have seen that episode, now you see Donnery's beautiful face. <laughs> we like to keep it in the family here. Um, so we did a, we were having conversations about career day and we're doing a little project on um, getting people that we know specifically black and brown people to do little intro videos on on what they do for work so that we could share it with a friend's school. She was doing a virtual career day. And then Donna Ree was all dressed up and fancy and I was already in the studio. So I really wanted to just come on and finish the conversation. I think that there's so much more that can be said. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do as a um, special events manager? Um, so I work for a small um, kindergarten through senior year, so pre-K or K through uh, 12 um, private institution in Massachusetts, um, in Milton, Massachusetts. And I work as a development events manager. Um, in my role, I work with um, gift officers and alumni officers that um, are working with alumni every day, those um, folks who have graduated from the school. Um, and keeping them engaged. So reminding them about their school, the impact that they had, um, and then in any way, of course, behind the scene is that they give either volunteering um, their services or um, give financially. So make a donation to the school. So um, I plan events that are uh, kind of help guide those conversations. Um, none of the events that I plan, there are, no, there are no solicitation, no asking for money at the events. So it's purely a um, feel good experience, uh, thanking them with sort of money can't buy experience or come and gather together as a group um, or reminisce. Uh, you haven't seen someone that you graduated from uh, with for like 10, 15 years or even two years. And you get to say, oh, my God, what are you doing? What's your career and networking? Um, so it's just a really feel good experience. And so the events that I plan can be really small where it's just a handful of folks gathering together or it's really large and one of those really large experiences um, would be a reunion um, where we invite folks to come back um, for their reunion year and each year sort of grouped by um, class year ending. Um, So unfortunately this year uh, because of uh, COVID-19 we did not have reunion weekend but it's over a couple of days a Friday Saturday and folks will leave on a Sunday and we could have anywhere from um, 400 to 1,000 people come back um, mm-hmm. with their friends and their um, their guests, the significant other that they bring. And they there will be sessions. Um, a head of school will speak and kind of give an update. We plan those sessions. And then, um, but basically, you come back to party. So you, right. have, <laughs> you, come, you have a reception, um, uh, a dinner with everyone, or just a, a kind of gathering, hangout time. Um, so I plan all the logistics for that. So the um, I, we work it as a team because there are p- other people within our office. Um, someone works on the uh, committees or gathering folks. So someone may call you up and say, hey, you graduated um, 20 years ago. We would love for you to be on the committee because you're an influencer. Mm-hmm. You know, you're pretty popular in the school and we want you to come back and talk 
um, and, and encourage other folks to come back. So they work on committees. Um, and then I would do the logistic piece. So I plan all of the, um, where the reception's gonna be, how many guests we're gonna have. So we need to make sure the catering is set, um, the facility is set up in a certain way. Um, and then also managing a budget because we mm -hmm. we do we don't want to kind of splurge, but we want right. it to look really, really nice because you spend a lot of money as a student coming and we mm -hmm. also want you to um, feel like whatever you put in for your registration fee for reunion um, is worth worth it. Uh, we never break even, which we, we never. get. Um, <laughs> It's one of the, we just want you to come back and have fun. So yeah. you may pay a hundred bucks to come back for the weekend, but you have four receptions. That's drinks included, food included. Um, that's nothing, right? Like You can't get that anywhere, especially in the Boston area. <laughs> so um, it's, it's just a really nice experience to have everyone back. So that's really great. I'm very familiar with the sort of independent independent school reunion weekend. I also I went to boarding school, um, which is a prep school or, you know, a quote unquote fancy school, and it was it was a surprise to me once I was old enough to like have reunions that everyone's reunion didn't look like what you just described because that's exactly what my reunion looks like. I think I was I was very surprised, and I shouldn't have been. It's a little bit bougie, and you know. Uh, unreasonable <laughs> to yeah. think that everybody is spending whole weekends going back when you know every movie you've seen about a high school reunion is like a dinner in the in the high school gym, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or as you get older, is like a meet up at a local restaurant or something like that. But again, it's a little bit different because um, because the nature of an independent school's um, student body is oftentimes very uh, diverse in terms of uh, location where people are from, geographically where people are from, as opposed to like a, a local school where everybody lives and is maybe from that area. So yeah. it's a very different, a very different thing to bring people from all over the world back to oh, the school. You need three days for it. You need, you need some time. Um, and, and it was different for me because I did not go to a private school. Um, so learning what that reunion looked like, I actually never had a reunion um, I didn't go back to a reunion. There was one reunion for my high school. Um, I graduated in 2001, um, and I, I was actually having my daughter <laughs> when they had the reunion, my uh, eldest daughter. So I was like, that's, they hadn't done like a five year or a 10 year. Like, it was just like, you know what, we're going to do this. And so yeah, yeah. it was a very different experience for like now planning something where it takes a whole year of like mm -hmm. vendors and building different things. So there are different um, reunion weekends or reunion days or nights are very mm -hmm. different depending on the school you go to or the school you went to. Um, Absolutely. Like very quickly. Absolutely. And tell me a little bit about what got you into event planning. Um, I kind of always been doing it, right? You know, like I know. I, um, <laughs> I've been to your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I think even like before I even married my husband um, or even younger, my family, my mom, we, we always had parties at our home. Um, not a very large home, but we would fit probably two or three times the number of people in our home and people just kind of sat on the stairs. They did think it were like the food and always, I liked where everything was like laid out. So I had that interest. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is something I like, I love. Um, and then throughout my career, every job I had, I always sort of found a way to say, Hey, um, you know, can I work on this piece of the event? You know, like I like that. And it wasn't never in, necessarily in my job title, but I, I had interest and a passion. Um, so my managers at the different times kind of saw that and said, yeah, you know what, let, let her just handle that. Um, and so it just kind of grew and grew and they're like, oh my gosh. So um, my first job was for a small college um, and I was recruiting um, small college in Massachusetts and I was recruiting students and it was an all girls school, the same school I went to, um, Pine Manor College. And when I started working there, we weren't getting a lot of students coming back. And I said, you know what? What if we had an open house? Everybody else does open houses. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Light bulb. Light bulb, right? Um, and so I helped coordinate that. And so um, we had a lot of students come back, like droves and droves of students wow. come to visit. Um, and that's when it hit me. And our dean at the time said, um, wow, I wasn't expecting this. I mean, <laughs> everybody I saw, I was like, come to our open house. It's going to be great. But you know what happened, really? It's to be honest, I, went, I was in a lot of schools that were um, students, had a lot of students of color. Mm. 
um, it was felt like the first time they were being invited to come to visit a school. Mm -hmm. um, so also seeing me as a black woman and talking about college, it inspired them. And so they were like, you know what? I told my story as being um, Afro-Caribbean woman and a lot of the schools I went into were students from the islands. And so they felt like a connection and that sort of bringing them back. So there were a lot of Jamaican, Haitian, um, uh, just everywhere. They were just kind of coming back and it felt good. So I got a lot of people there. Um, and then that's just started to do events from that point. So it's just like, that's what I kept doing and adding on more events and less recruitment, more events, less recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it kind of worked out. Can you talk a little bit? Sometimes I think um, I'm a little bit envious of people who are able to create like a vibe, right? Like there's so much more to an event than just like schedule and food. I mean, it's the kind of thing where if it's not there, then you maybe don't notice it. But when it's there, you definitely do. Right. And so can you talk a little bit about how you create that? Because there's there's a thing, there's a, it's a skill, it's a skill and I don't know how to do it. So it is a skill. And I think for me, I'm, I always question if I'm actually doing it right. You know, I think that's the best part is like always questioning if you are actually hitting the mark on all of it. Um, it's really knowing your audience, regardless of what event you're planning and putting together. Um, I did some wedding planning in the past and that audience to plan a wedding is very different from planning as like an alumni reception. Um, it's like, what are people going to look for? What are the goals we want to get out of it? And so um, visually, I think a lot of visually of like when someone walks into a room, what's going to make them excited? What's going to start conversation? So it, I'm not going to have like a ton of um, like big, large 60 inch round tables that you would see at like a dinner um, in a room where it's smaller and people really want to interact and talk. And mm -hmm. so I would have like tall cocktail tables. Like, so you, I'm always thinking of, those different things and to build that experience. Um, lighting is important because, you know, you don't want it to be too dark <laughs> or <laughs> too light. Then the, the, if at the right light, people will open up more and talk more and interact more and get closer together. Um, as I'm saying all of this, I'm like, this is so, so hard for me, given we're in COVID-19 and yeah. that events are not happening because you can't build those sort of uh, vignettes of interactions with people. Mm -hmm. um, so, It'll be interesting how it changes, but um, but that's what I kind of would do. It's like you sort of start with a plan of like, okay, who's the audience? What's the space I want? Um, I want to be able to convey the right message. Is there someone that's going to speak? Who's that speaker? Um, not everybody are good speakers to be in certain situations. Um, <laughs> so I, and then being okay with that, right? And then mm -hmm. saying, well, if something goes wrong, what's the backup plan? What's the plan A, plan B, plan C? Um, at times, I think I get a little anal about certain things of like, things have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And but if, if something was out of place, as you're saying, like it's easy, it'll be noticeable, right? Mm -hmm. but someone, um, but not necessarily the guest. So I try to minimize the guests seeing behind the curtain, so to speak. <laughs> Right. Well, that's important. I mean, the the things that we think are haphazard as guests, right? Someone someone has to be thinking about those details and and then present them in a way that they just sound they just seem like, "Oh, this plant was always here." Always here, yeah. <laughs> You ran a, an event planning business on your own. Can you talk a little bit about how you started that mm -hmm. and uh, the steps you took? There might be somebody watching who uh, really likes to put on parties, right? And doesn't know uh, how to get started to really, and again, the, the, the note is that obviously we're not doing big get togethers anymore, but if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, so. Exactly true. Um, so I did start um, Naturally Seamless Events, um, I'd say in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, um, I no longer have the business, uh, or it's on sort of hiatus. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I started having children and the timing it took and the energy it took to put it together was a lot and it was sort of competing. So I figured I'm going to take a pause on that now. Um, but to get started, it was really um, a push from my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and having someone in your corner that say, you know what, you can do this, go for it, try. Um, so, you know, I was playing various events. Um, and what I really liked, my company was focused on um, day of coordination. So it's it's for the brides or the event planner or someone that sort of, I can do it, I can do it myself, I can do it myself, but then realize on the day of, you actually, you can't do it yourself. Right. <laughs> you are the host, you are the one moving around, you are the bride, you know, you can't do it all yourself. So um, to take that stress off, I planned, my focus was day of coordination. And so mm-hmm. I think it's important if you are planning to start out, um, find a niche, find a piece that is not being done um, as effectively as you think it could be, and then you start with that small piece. Because um, I could walk in and say like, yep, I can plan a full event, and yes, I can do that, but I was okay, my goal was for folks who were starting the planet themselves and said, you know what, I, I just can't handle the last few weeks details. I need someone to do that. So mm-hmm. I started to plan the, um, you had your vendors booked, I will call and confirm that they're going to be there at the day and the time you need. Um, when the mm-hmm. day of you're running around and hosting and you're, or you're getting married, I'm going to make sure all of the plans you put in place is executed the way you want it. Um, so I would plan all of the meetings around, okay, you want this to, this flowers to be here? I'll make sure the flower, the florist has it done where they were supposed to. So you don't have to worry about those details. Um, and so kind of that's how I got started. Um, and I, you know, I did a lot of, um, a few weddings and a few of just special events uh, where people are like, yeah, man, I'm, I just can't. I'm like, that's where I come in. And <laughs> significantly less because I'm not planning a 12 week or, you know, or a 12 month type of event. It's like you did the work and now you need someone to make it work. So right. um, that was kind of how it started. I love that. That's it's uh, as you're talking about events, I'm so wistful <laughs> for, for a party right now. Like I would love to go to a party. That I I just I just felt like I just went to a new place and I was like oh I remember Christmas time yeah <laughs> when things are good where do people where can people go to find more information about figuring out what kind of niche or what kind of service that they want to offer um, I, I think it's really putting yourself in places where you can network um, mm-hmm. all year round um, folks are in similar similar business or um, yeah, it's essentially similar business as you as you as you want to be in. Um, mm-hmm. I, while I was working full time at a college um, recruiting, um, I knew I had a passion for events, and I said, you know what, I'm going to then reach out and kind of search um, jobs of mm-hmm. people for interns. As a grown woman, it was like to look for someone to be an intern, but it was going to be a part time thing. So mm-hmm. I actually found. Um, uh, a woman who was running her own uh, wedding company and florist company combined, and she was looking for someone that just needed to kind of help her on the day of stuff. Um, and I learned a lot from her by sort of joining her team. So mm-hmm. it's like being vulnerable and saying, hey, you know what? I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to um, talk with people. I'm going to hear what they're doing. Um, and then from there, you can kind of say, okay, I like this and I don't like that. I actually, I think I'm really good at that, but I'm, but I want to grow in that. Right. So Mm -hmm. see what you're doing at that point. Challenges of doing, or what are some of the biggest challenges in doing special events planning? Um, I think it's the people that you're planning for (laughs) (laughs) because you, you know, you get so close to a project, you get so close to an event that you're organizing um, and then realizing that your vision and someone else's vision may not necessarily be the same. Um, mm-hmm. collaborating and kind of understanding. So, you know, I can say to a bride or um, someone hosting a large event and say like, I actually don't think that this should go this way or should be done this way, but they have a vision in mind. So my my job essentially is to also execute on the what they want, but show them how it can be better. And so those can be challenges where they're like, I can't, I don't want to see that. I just want to see what I, I can do. Um, right. So although working with people is in my type, my job, as overall, but everything I do, um, it's a balance. It's being mm-hmm. able to, it can be frustrating if no one sees your vision. And then it can be frustrating if no one wants to hear your professional um, input. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where, that's where it gets a little bit um, sort of challenging or frustrating. But those are the things you kind of 
work it through and, and not every client is the same and you mm -hmm. learn every client too. I like that. I mean, I think that it must, that sounds like a challenge. I'm, I'm, I am stuttering because I'm, I'm remembering being in situations like that where you're like, I see where you're going with this and you're not going to be happy. Yeah. But when people get their minds set on something at yeah. some point you have to move, you have to say, okay, yeah. like, <laughs> but then they get mad at you at the end. Exactly. Or, or it happens to me because like I have a vision and I'm like going forward with it. And then someone else like on a team or someone says, you know what? I'm not sure. And it's like, please, Donnery, step back, look at it from their perspective, right. you know, and then you're like, ah, I get it. You know, so um, it's a learning process on both ends. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's, that's really real. Is there anything, any kind of encouragement that you would, would give to someone who is, thinking now, especially during this time when it feels like events are not, are never coming back. Right. Even though target is, is insisting on putting out all these party, like yeah. party <laughs> plates and party things. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid that events are not coming back, but what kind of encouragement can you give to people as they're thinking through this? Um, I, this is what I've had to tell myself um, because okay. I, you know, like you don't want to believe that an event will never be the same again as it was because being around people interacting is it's the nature of an event. Um, but what I've tried to remind myself and I would encourage others to do is um, try to be innovative. Like this mm -hmm. is a moment to try new things or change new things. Um, and one example of that is like, we know everyone has been on the screen, like virtually everything's uh, screen, screen, screen. Um, and you don't want to necessarily do that with an event, but maybe it becomes a, hy a hybrid. And, you know, not everyone will be ready to come back in physical distance and physically person, but how do you see it changing? How you can make it unique when you have half your audience at home and half in a physical space, you're going to have to meld them together. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you do that and still be fun and put your spin on it? Um, so it's just different things. So I think thinking about the future, because there is someone out there that is already thinking about if we don't physically come back, how an event will look. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's different platforms that do breakout rooms. Um, and, you know, I'm already thinking, like, I can't do another virtual meeting every single day. So what, what, what time of day would be optimal for folks if you're also home with your children? Um, like, what do you do? Like, just sort of thinking out the, outside the box. Um, we're going to have to blow it up, you know, really mm -hmm. the event industry up and change in different ways. Um, and think about, you know, what, what's new? What can be the next thing? I don't know the answers, but it's just sort of like opening your mind to, to those new things. Yeah. That's so funny. As you think about that, as you said, a breakout room, I know that at reunion, they often have uh, some sort of child care, some kind of child activities that are going on on this on so that the parents can be at the party, right? Cause not everybody can leave their kids at home. And also part of, of, coming back together is getting your kids together, right? Like the next generation of friends. And so I was just thinking about breakout rooms where you'd have some sort of, I don't know why clown came to mind, but some yep. kind yep. of activity or some kind of like distraction for the kids yep. during your, your event so that parents know they can set up the computer in the kitchen or <laughs> like in the bedroom. And then they can still participate yeah. in what's going on, but it's provided by you. It's not that the parent has to find a YouTube movie long enough. Exactly. exactly. Yep. And and some so I've I've been watching lots of um, webinars and things of what people have been doing, other schools have been doing, and that's essentially it. You know, they created a kids corner, and mm -hmm. there's museum links. There are like shows that are like thirty minutes, and it's sort of tailored to it's still branded for your school or your institution or your business. But it's just for the kids. So it's like, okay, if you're, you have the opportunity to have two computers at home or a, a tablet and a computer, you put the kids in the room with this and it's kind of engaging them. And then you have the parents with their adult night um, that you can interact with. So there's just so many opportunities to build from that, um, which is unique. But then it's like, oh my God, how's that going to work? You know? And it's a whole nother layer of, of things that you have to do now at a, at a kid age, you know, for, ki for a kid oh, audience. I'm so sorry, my, <laughs> my daughter said so she's used the bathroom. Give me one second. <laughs> yeah, 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 go ahead.
So Donna Reed, thank you so much for making time to come on to the show today. I'm really so excited to have you. I think that I'm I'm really wistful for events and I know that they're gonna come back. We just have to like hold it together for a little while longer. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it was actually really fun. I think um, being able to talk about what I do is really great. And you know, I remember that I would look back on my time as a youth, like a youth, someone younger, and not see people doing the different jobs that I did. So that I'm doing now. Um, so it's really cool to be able to talk about what I do, so that others can be inspired for the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, when events come back and they come back with this new innovation, please come and tell us all about it, okay? Because we are, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it for all of us, not only them coming back, but improving some of the things that are going on now that we've just sort of fallen into and are just trying to make it work. It's like build the ship while we're sailing. Yeah, yeah. So I usually say like, um, as the plane is landing, you're building the runway. So it's like, we got to figure that out. <laughs> That's so real. That's so real. Well, until next time, Donnery, thank you. Thanks for having me.